how are you doing today? Today is my birthday and I am so happy because it's the weekend now. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, get started on Act 4 of the Fontaine Archon Quest. And last time we were slowly, you know, building reputation in prison to be able to, be able to investigate what happened to Child. Um, but now it seems like we found some clues and we are going to find out where they lead. Um, we already saw the very first part of the quest before and saw the, the card Cataclysm's Quickening. Uh, that is very ominous, but I'm excited for it because this is, this is so, oh, this is so exciting. Last year, um, I also got to do Act 4 on my birthday as well. So. Uh, this is kind of become a tradition, but I don't think it will be this way next year because I don't think it will line up. But as you can see, last time we got a little itty bitty Octo Baby from the Anniversary Event Rewards. That's so, that's so cute! And later today, we're going to get the Bubble Blower, so I'm going to be super excited for that. Um, so let's see, the first things first, I did not claim it by accident this time. Happy birthday, Traveler! Please find the gift attached to this message. Thanks for all your support. No matter where you are or what kind of problem you are facing, we hope you will be successful, gain from it, and have an even brighter tomorrow. A gift given to a very special someone on a very special day. Here's to you, the symphony and echoes amidst the verdant trees. Wishing you happiness and peace in your sweet dreams. Oh, it's an Aranara festival! Oh, da, 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 da. I think that's what the music notes sound. So cute, Arna! And the Primo Gems too. Lots and lots of Primo Gems. Oh yeah, I forgot to collect these last time. That's right, we saw all these things happen last time, but now things are gonna get serious this time. Um, okay, so, claimed my present, got the Aqua Baby. Oh yes, um, so I'm here in the beautiful, oh, Celestia is so close. You can notice it there. Alright, with Celestia watching us and the stars watching us, um, I have a whole bunch of acquaint fates uh, saved up. So uh, I was thinking today I can, you know, use them. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know what, I don't know how close I am to a five star. Um, I wanna, okay, we're just gonna use 50. 50 wishes. Just to see what we get. Because I'm feeling lucky today. Okay, Eye of Perception. I don't use that. But that's fine. <laughs> okay, another purple. I do have all the force with. <gasps> Kuki Shinobu! You know how hard it was for me to get her the first time, and now she just shows up in the in the sta in the standard. <laughs> Well, that's my first contemplation for her, I think, right? Because it was such a struggle to get her the first few times. Barbara! That's good. I could always use more Barbara constellations because I actually do use her. But she's not C6 yet, somehow. Where is she? I don't, I don't think she is. Alright, let's see. What else are we going to get? Sacrificial sword, not bad, not bad. This one. I think I I think I gotten a did I get a five star recently? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> Cause apparently it's been a really long time since I pulled on the standard banner. Dragon's Bane. Kobe! Nice. That's my first Kabe constellation. Last one. <gasps> Gold! Alright, let's see. Who do I get? Who do I get for my birthday? Alright. Oh, it's a book! Interesting. I don't have the Skyward Atlas. And Xiangling! Yay! Alright. Well, I am always happy to get more new stuff. Now, let's see. What is this? Oh yeah, if I use this, it gives me 
gives me a resin, and then lets me keep the cake. Yay! Let's see. Attack. Increases elemental damage bonus by 12. Normal attack hits up to 50% chance to earn the favor of the clouds, which actively seek out near my opponents to attack for 15 seconds, doing 160% attack damage. Interesting. Very cool. Hmm. I will see who can use that. Awesome. Okay. There's 50 wishes done. Uh, who did I get constellations for? Hello, Ether. <laughs> Alright, that should be your first constellation. Because, like, for four, four stars that I pull for, I just try to get one. And same for Kave, too. So now, now they have constellations. And what about Barbara? Oh, Barbara's not C6, but she's almost C6. It's been a slow. It's been slow getting her. <laughs> I wonder when I'll be as tall as my big sister. <laughs> who, who has the exclamation mark? Oh, Xiangling. Right, right, right. You are also almost C6. Great. Okay. Um, next thing I want to do is we were yeah we've been meeting up with a little um blubber beast called Berry Puff. And I think this is the last day, because last time it was really healthy after we've been feeding it and helping uh, nurture it back to health. And as you can also see, uh, so I have Ether and Linny, because that's my like, Fontaine team. But I also have Nahida and Wanderer, just to mix it up a bit. And also, you know, those are some of the, the two, I think, most important characters to me that have come out this year. And I want to bring them along for me journey on my birthday. All right, let's go visit Barry Puff and then see what is up with the story. Speaking of which, Paimon wonders how Barry Puff is doing. Seems like it's gotten used to feeding it, uh-huh. Come on, let's go check on it again. That's right! Oh yeah, I, f I discovered this yesterday. So the Octo Baby kind of like is sleepy and sleeping in this little bubble on land but if you go in the water it has like this little purple and yellow trail and it's happy and sparkly and the bubbles coming off of it it just looks like it's having a great time being in its natural environment and so i'm happy i'm happy there you have <laughs> <It's> so smooth <laughs> octo baby's happy very puff. Very puff looks a lot bigger too. Yeah, it's not a baby anymore. Very puff is big now. Wow, it's gotten so big. Maybe you should be calling it very puffier. And it looks really healthy too. All thanks to our hard work feeding it. Blub, blub. If that's the case, perhaps we should send it back to the sea. It is its home after all. Blub. Aww. The blubber bee seems to understand your your intention and looks a little bit hesitant. Hmm? Doesn't it want to leave? Well, Paimon understands. This place must already feel like home. Well, <laughs> it's okay. Well, the sea's a vast place. You can come back anytime you want. Hmm? We take the blubber beast outside. It's looking in the direction of the aquarium, no? Doesn't it want to leave, huh? Blub, blub. Wait, it doesn't seem to mean that. Oh, its old friend is here! Even though you've grown up, you should still have fun with your friends. Goodbye, Mary Puff. Take good care of yourself. The grown-up blubber beast seems a little reluctant to leave. It comes to you and gently rubs your cheek, as if saying goodbye. Before swimming away, it seems to remember something. It bows its head, bites your sleeve lightly, then raises its head again and barks softly in the direction of the aquarium twice. Still, it's facing toward the aquarium and calling out. But it seems concerning to me. Well, mm, goodbye, Berry Puff. This is what we've been waiting for, though. Poor little Berry Puff was trapped in here and not well. So to be able to see it go back free with its friends in the vast ocean to explore makes me very happy. I'm so happy for you, Berry Puff. And don't worry, if you come back here, we will visit too. 
This is a shell. Whoa, this is... I would never imagine this would be, like, be a gift waiting for us. <laughs> it's a nice kid, isn't it? Aww. That's so cute. What is this? Bubby Chubby Creative Evolution. Accompany the small butt blubber beast as it grows big and strong. Yay! Oh, I'm so happy. I'm happy everything turned out okay with, with Berry Puff, and Berry Puff is now free. Free to explore just like us. Just like the many friends we make on our adventure. We're all taking our different paths, but someday we'll meet again. <laughs> Alright. Uh, now it's time to do some serious stuff. <laughs> Here we go. Investigate freely. Alright, let us see. Last time, we discovered that Child had escaped to somewhere, and his buddies were helping him cover it up by creating rumors to stop people from going to the place where he escaped from. But they said it, he went to a dead end, and it's all flooded now. So we're going to ask Framine to help us go down there. Although, once again, it sounds super scary. I'm not sure I want to send Framine down there. <laughs> hey, you over there? Hi, it's, it's me. Who, me? Yeah, you. Say, do you like playing card games? I suppose you know, I like do. Genius Invocation TCG? Yeah, Ether loves playing it. Even people down here play that game. Everyone plays this game, Ether. And besides, they have to have some fun down here, too. <laughs> you TCG players are like mint in the wild! Literally <laughs> sprouting up everywhere! Hey, come on now. What's wrong with finding fellow invocation aficionados? Anyway, care to join me for a game? One of these days. Maybe, maybe we come back. Uh, no thanks. We're busy with other things at the moment. Ah, uh, alright. No pressure. Yeah. But why would you be <laughs> looking for people to play Genius Invocation in a place like this? Oh, Don't choose the pink So maybe... <laughs> Whether you're throwing hmm. down cards or throwing punches, it's all a competition, isn't it? It's all the same in my eyes. There are lots of card players here in the fortress. When I saw you, I immediately thought, Hey, even outsiders from other nations play cards. So I came over to say hi. Would you mind chatting with us for a moment? Sure. Great! Since you've been here longer than us, you need to flex your seniority a little bit, right? <laughs> Maybe you could yeah, start that's by right. telling us newcomers some stories about this place. I thought you would have already heard everything by now. Alright then, did you have anything specific in mind? Or do you want me to just pick a topic? Why don't you pick? We'll let you know if we've heard it already. Alright. Have you heard any strange rumors since you've arrived? Oh, we have, for sure. <laughs> then, did you know that there are some people who are always gossiping over in the corner? I'm sure there are. Well, there's always people talking. I mean, who knows? I mean... <laughs> there are two guys who are always skulking around in the corners of corridors gossiping. The bigger guy is Quisto, and the skinny one is Lavarun. People call them the Bombshell Bros. I never really found their gossip very mind-blowing. And it's pretty much just the same stuff that I hear about when I'm at work every day. Okay. If you're interested, you can go talk with them. They tend to talk a lot of nonsense, but they aren't exactly bad. Okay. Hmm, good to know. Do you have anything else to tell us? Hmm, let me think. Sounds like you want to hear something a little more tantalizing. Sure. <laughs> oh, did you know that the Duke was also a convict in the Fortress of Merope before? Ooh, I did not know that, huh? but that makes some Wait, sense. are you serious? Yes, he's very That's familiar. Right. <laughs> the Duke was an inmate just like you and me. Seems he was exiled here for committing some crime. Who knows how he ended up rising up to become the warden, though. To go from an ordinary inmate to becoming the manager of the whole place? I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I kind of respect that. Me too. Shows that he really worked his way up. Uh, by the way, do you happen to know anything about a Forbidden Zone? Yeah, let's let's get that before we meet up with Lenny. A Forbidden Zone? <laughs> hmm. Sounds like something that someone just made up. I've never heard mm, of that. Okay. Where did you hear about it? I'm a friend. That's just a rumor we've been hearing, but no worries if you've never heard of it. Do you have anything else you can tell us? 
I mean, we are being vague about what we want to hear. Mm, not that I <laughs> can yes. think of, but I'll be sure to tell you anything interesting I hear next time. You'll have to play a game of Genius Invocation with me first, though. Deal. We can do that. <laughs> but next time. All right, investigate freely. It seems we are investigating a little bit too freely, I feel like. We're not giving other people much to go off of. Uh, but hey, never works, right? We did get some intel there. Oh, over here. Hello. There's a group of people over there. Let's go listen in. So I said, that's not a faucet. Hey, hey, who are you two? Why'd you come over all of a sudden? Uh, we're eavesdroppers. I mean... Oh, uh, sorry for eavesdropping. Sounds like you were talking about something private. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the matter? <laughs> They're just looking to join in on our fun, that's We are all. looking for conversational hey, partners. Don't pretend like it's okay for them to just interrupt us like that. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Fine. You're lucky we don't mind extroverts that much. Yeah. Yeah, like, I would not be like that in real life. Like, I don't have any confidence to just start talking to people like Ether and Paimon do. <laughs> Thanks, you guys are really nice. <laughs> you hear that, Quisto? What nice! Oh, these are the gossiping guys. Your expressions tell me you're looking to hear some juicy info, am I right? <laughs> but before that, it just so happens that I know you too. Oh, do you? Really? Are we that famous? You kidding? How often does anyone get a personal tour led by his <laughs> grace himself? Practically everyone was talking about it. Word has it that you also caused quite the kerfuffle. Oh, <laughs> it was just a little mistake. <laughs> a little mistake, huh? I like the way you put it. You see, people with a good attitude can join our group anytime. Unlike some of the others here. You're it is kind of crazy we got a tour of the prison but from the I'm warden. I'm Cristo and this <laughs> is Lavaroon. People usually call us the bombshell bros, but don't worry. We're not playing with bombs or anything. It's just that our information is always so explosive and we blow minds on the regular. Okay. So you two really like to gossip? All right, give us, give us some you info sure then. <laughs> no, no. You don't get it. Knowing intelligence will make things better for you here. For example, knowing who's working with whom, who has the latest rumors, who's not getting along. Wouldn't you like to know all that? Mm, usually not, but we are trying to find out some important information here, so I guess yeah. Oh my Archon, I'd love to know! Please tell me. Whoa, all this info's worth something, you know? It's okay, we have Ooh, lots of credit coupons. I don't mind him. Quisto's always this way. Just play nice and say something to massage his ego. Oh, okay. The welfare meals. Talk about the welfare meals. Okay. We eat the most incredible welfare meal recently. Right, right. That meal we had yesterday was super delicious. Paimon can still taste it whenever she closes her eyes. Now, what's up with the other two Is people that there so? that would notice that, <laughs> to tell you the that truth, we were approaching I've this area? I've been making those welfare meals. <laughs> I've been working as a kitchen assistant for about a month and a half now. Oh, so you're the one who made those delicious steaks. Amazing. You could be a professional chef. Yeah, that's right. You are correct. I am a true professional. In fact, I even went to culinary school. Oh, awesome. But enough about that. Since you like my cooking, I guess that means we share similar tastes. Listen carefully. This little bombshell will help you learn what's really going on here in the fortress. Okay. Huh? Did Lavaroon just wink at me? It seems he's saying, don't be upset, he's a good fellow. That's a lot you're reading in from that Listen, one kids, wink, but let's hear it. The power structure within the fortress is quite complicated. The overworlders couldn't care less about us down here. We're basically dogs to them. You've already met the one person here you should never cross, the Duke, Risley. He knows more than you think. And if he doesn't care about something, then he often doesn't bother dealing with okay. it. Okay. 
Those who have the Duke's attention get all kinds of special perks. Even better treatment. I thought he said, but he said we're not going to get special perks. Uh, I know who you mean. <laughs> it's that Jurier character, right? I don't think there's anything useful about him at all. Why does he visit the infirmary practically every day? Is it normal for anyone to be going in and out of there so often? If you ask me, he's just faking it to get out of work. But did you know that Churio was a talented researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute before he came here? Interesting, okay. There's no denying that. I don't care if he was a researcher that could turn dirt into mora. Once you're in the fortress of Meripede, you're just another inmate like everybody else. <laughs> oh, interesting. According to Quistel, a person named Jurio frequently frequents the infirmary. I should take note of that. Speaking of which, the last time I saw him, he was passing by in the corridor with Lorveen. I also heard they started arguing in the library and got into a fight, right? Oh, there's a library that's here? Terrible of a I think there's a library here. You mean he hit a woman? Wow, I never imagined he was that bad. But that Lorveen's also quite the odd one, you know? She's always gabbing away, got into a fight with a man, and she also got sent to the infirmary. Come to think of it, I always okay. see her going to the sick bay every couple of days. Too. So there's a lot of people going to the infirmary, and Wait a second. there's also you we also know think. that Sijuan uh, is not in the infirmary the, in the hour before lunch. They're secretly meeting there to go on dates. <laughs> ah, but it's really hard to imagine. After all, I do remember seeing Lorveen beat Jurya to a pulp that one time. And we might be overthinking things. Yeah. So Jurya had a confrontation with a girl named Lorveen, who also frequents the infirmary. I'll remember that too. Alright. <laughs> yeah, okay, what happened? There was two people here before, and where did they go? That's, that's suspicious. Was it the two people that they were talking about? Because if so, that kind of makes sense that they were going to leave. <laughs> Look, there are some people talking over there. Let's listen in on the conversation. Let's very obviously eavesdrop on them. <laughs> With the social confidence that I wish I could have. But not really. And if you ask me, because they're in jail and they're investigating. On the surface act like they're all a bunch of aristocrats. <laughs> Do any of them give half a hoot about a bunch of dogs like us? Hey, speak for yourself, mate. I'm no well. dog. <laughs> oh, you think you're special or something? If you're here, then you're just a convict like the rest of us. I've heard that even if you're released after serving your sentence, going back to life on the surface ain't any better. Once a criminal, always a criminal. We're marked for life. Unless you're Aether, uh, who has been that. a criminal in every single country and still ends How up being cool a hero be anyways. <laughs> by a giant flood and everyone had to start over from nothing. What kind of filthy bilge water are you spewing? I have family up there. You best shut your sewer hole with talk like that. Listen, things ain't so great on the surface, but who says that you have to leave? I've heard that you can still stay here and work even after you've yeah. served your sentence. In fact, you get a lot of freedom down here, me. considering that you're prisoners. Like, you guys are working, yes, but you also get days off. Anyway. Like today. <laughs> and what makes you think they'd want to hire someone like you? <laughs> it's one of the great mysteries of the universe. This is, how someone is useless as far as, as prisons so go, they, Whoa, this place seems a little like bit... really unhappy about the overworld. <laughs> Speaking of which... I've never heard anyone use that. the words overworld or underworld when we were living up there. Is that only something the inmates down here say? Like fellow blog. Um, I think you're right. That's true. I guess because then they're down here, they see more of a okay, divide between the two. Okay, not everyone. And it's about time for us to go meet Linny. Linny! According to the card he left us, we should go meet him in the production zone. Sounds good. Yeah, I guess they probably notice the differences more than people on the surface do. So that's why the terminology comes about. Okay, on the upper... Is there elevators? Yeah. See, now I have the map along, I can see where the elevators are. I can see the other elevator is this way. Oh, the gold trail also. The gold trail also tells us where we need to go. I'm not going in circles trying to look for... Which, which one of these has the elevator? Okay. 
it's cool that this place has functioning elevators, but it's also like cool that they want us to take it and like, use the technology and appreciate it more because we, because we can't otherwise just like climb up here like we can in like other buildings in Tivat. We can't just climb here. Lenny! Hmm. Huh? Um, hi. That look in your eyes. <laughs> I like that you transition. Found something? A little something, yeah. Hey, this is no time to be modest. Just tell him we found a boatload of information. Yeah, okay, we found out <laughs> some more about child. <laughs> expected of the legendary <laughs> but nothing more about what you're you looking for. So hopefully you've got some attention. progress in that. <laughs> you summarize your findings to Linny. I'd have never guessed that myself. Uh, the rumors swirling about this place are unreliable after all. And Master Child probably went missing because he found a way out. He is a harbinger after all. I suppose he's much more resourceful than I initially gave him credit for. <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't enough for our final report to Father. We need to find out Master Child's exact whereabouts. Father told me that even though Master Child said he was just coming to Fontaine for a vacation, he actually had some personal reasons. Yeah, I his figured. His agenda might be linked to his disappearance. I think so. He said that something was calling to him. We know that he was losing control of his Hydro Vision. You know, this is the nation of Hydro. And that it has something to do with his time in the Abyss where he was... You know, trained to be a warrior. There's definitely like dark abyss magic going on with him, and I'm I'm worried about him. So we gotta find him. But it seemed if something was calling to him, does that mean like he's just hearing things, or is he being like possessed or like summoned by something? That that was why it was so important that he had to go at all costs. The most important thing right now was to catch up to him. His escape route is already flooded, so we'll have to task someone with professional diving skills to chase after him. Well, when you put it that way, it's obvious that only Fremenet would be up to the task. Yes, that's right. Bingo! Is he around? He's working today. Coming here as a group would have attracted too much attention. I'll talk to him about it later. Thank you. But also tell him it's really dangerous because his child went down there. I don't think it's something good that's going to be on the other side, so, you know, I think... I don't know, I'm worried about Fremini because we saw him, like, like drowning in the trailer, and I, I just don't want to... I don't want to be responsible for that. No need to I don't want that me. to happen to him at this all. This was always a part of our mission, after all. Honestly, I'm far more impressed by you guys managing to collect all this information right under Risley's watchful eyes. Hung, hang on, don't say that, because... I, there's no doubt in my mind though that Risley does know what we're up to, somewhat. Like, <laughs> don't, don't give us too much credit. <laughs> Collecting information has always been our I'm sure he's well aware. Yeah. Now, let me think. To find out more information, Fremine will have to retrace Master Child's original route. Okay. And if he's to do that, he'll have to set out on the next pipe cleaning day at the earliest. That's six days from now. Six days from now, okay. And after that, he'll probably take another two or three days to return. You can even estimate okay. how long it'll take for him to get back? How do you, yeah, you don't know how far down it goes. Time. We know each other's capabilities. <laughs> yeah, but like you don't you don't know how far down the pipe goes Trapper, or where it goes what to. What say you to meeting here nine days from now? We'll be able to pick up Fremine while we're at it, too. Nine days. Okay, sure. Oh, and there's just one last thing we'd like your help with. Yeah, sure, of course. So we can just sit back and wait for Fremine's report on Master Child's whereabouts, we still need to make more progress on the investigation of the Forbidden Zone. Agreed. Fremine's no master of disguise. Lynette's still working on getting intel from the other areas, and I'll need to spend some time helping Fremine prepare for his diving mission. So, you are the only ones right. we can come. disguise. We're, we're great at that. What do you want us <laughs> to do? Will it be hard? Well, I won't call it easy per se, but I think you'll be able to pull it off. 
Thanks Listen for carefully. that amazing You'll confidence need to find in an us. excuse <laughs> to get into the infirmary and investigate the room and environs. You've mentioned several sketchy-looking people always meeting at the infirmary earlier, so it probably has something to do with the secret we're hoping to uncover. Yes. You've already met the head nurse, so she'll be less suspicious of you. Okay. Investigate the internal structure of the infirmary and any active dealings within, and pass those on to me alongside anything else you're able to discover. Sounds good. But also, there's no need to take risks. Don't forget, safety always comes first. Sounds good. I'll give it my best shot. Oh, my apologies. I just started rambling out of habit. It was almost as if I was talking to my younger brother. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing, right? But what if I'm the older brother? <laughs> I mean, Ether is older. He's a lot... a lot older. <laughs> he's, he's also the older brother between him and Lumine, too, right? Just like Linny and Lynette. Linny's the older brother. They have that in common. Then we'll head out as soon as we finish our prep. Let's go our separate ways for now, then. Don't forget, we meet here again in nine days. Nine Stay days. Safe. That's a long time in in investigation time. After doing some prep work with Paimon, you begin to slowly approach the infirmary under the guise or something. Okay. Okay. We're pondering hey, music. Stay here for now. Paimon will take a peek. That's good. Mm. Hmm? There seem to be several people inside. Let's try to eavesdrop on them first. You and Paimon hide in a corner and try your best to eavesdrop on the people inside the infirmary. Several people manage to appear to be engaged in conversation. It's not impossible. Okay. It's a bit hard to understand them from here, so why don't we just try to talk to them in person? Alright, only if you think you're witty enough to... You, took, you nod and take a long deep breath before inhaling a large amount of vapor for me. You recall correctly that, that potion is a result of a failed attempt at alchemy you once performed with Paimon at some point. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's our excuse to get in. <laughs> Are you okay? No. Oh my! It does not What's look okay on? at all. There's no need to panic. <laughs> Take a deep breath before you begin. He actually bought the some poison the just to get in. <laughs> and then nausea, and then collapsed onto the ground. Paimon doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Freezing limbs, twitching fingers, and pale complexion. <gasps> Could it be poison? Could it be poison? Let me take a look. Please lie down over here. My stomach really hurts. <laughs> oh, Don't he's worry. there! I'll get you to the bed safely. Here, hold on to my shoulder and walk slowly. <gasps> you can do it, Traveler! <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You're sick after all. Now, please relax. I'm just going to do a preliminary checkup on you. Sejuan has taken out a few instruments and presented her checkup. I hope I'm not so healthy that she... Okay. <laughs> I see now. My checkup has confirmed that he's not in any mortal danger. That's our worst fear out of the way. That's good. Eh? Oh, that's good. But... But then what made him sick? I'll diagnosis of the patient <laughs> now. Please, relax and take a deep breath. Seedrin's using her hands to palpate different areas more abdomen. Seems like she's using elemental energy too. Her, ex her expression's going more relaxed. Don't sense serious damage to your organs either. Does it hurt when I press here? It's not too bad. Hmm. And here? Uh, that hurt a little. Huh? But based on my initial checkup, there shouldn't be a problem here. Oh, how strange. Oops. Oh no, am I acting a bit over the top? <laughs> Does this hurt? No, not really. You can barely feel it. Oh. Hmm. I understand. So that's what it is. I think you just ate something that disagreed with you. That's all. 
Nothing too serious. Oh, outside of a pretty bad stomach ache when it decides to act up. Okay. okay. So that's what it is. Thank goodness it's not anything more serious. Yeah. That's good. I'm really <gasps> sad of Ether and you died for this act. <laughs> I'll inform our head chef, Mr. Wolsey, of this problem as soon as possible. Congratulations! Okay. The health risk is incredibly low, so you should recover within a couple days. Why don't you take a rest here while I go get some medicine for you? Sounds Miss good, Levine, thank you. I'll have to trouble you to help me look after this new patient while I'm gone. Very well. <sighs> and she hopped away, just like that. <laughs> this infiltration mission is going much more smoothly than I imagined. Next, there are only two people left in the room. Siege one just called that woman Larvine, so she has to be one of the frequent visitors to the infirmary I heard before. Hello. So how are you feeling now? And the other guy. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Still not great. I can't keep staring at her. I'll draw unwanted attention. The guy seems to have also noticed now that he's looking in my direction, too. Well, I mean, you are the sick person. So I guess everyone's looking. His really bad. He was stumbling about the whole way here, so Paimon's really worried. Yeah. If Miss Sijuin says it's not a serious problem, then there's no need to worry. She's the best medic we've got down here. Okay. But it also looks like she's the only medic you've got down here. You know, there was another one of the NPCs who was also a doctor, too. I know they might not be doctor of the prison, but they might just be another prisoner. But, I mean, like, everyone's working down here, so they could help out. <laughs> ah, well, that's true. What do you mean, that's true? That's really misrepresenting the situation. Of course I can't speak for the whole fortress, but it's not like everyone imprisoned here is useless, you know? Though they may have committed crimes and gotten locked up here as a result, they still know a thing or two about medicine, and they help Miss Sishuin take care of the sick and injured. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But did you have to lecture me about it in front of another patient? Aren't you a patient too? Where did all your energy come from? Uh... Ah, huh, that's correct. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. Okay. Are you two also sick? We've been sick a while. I come back every once in a while for checkups and to pick up the medicines Miss Siegeween prescribes for us. That's just the nature of chronic illnesses. As for her, <laughs> you could say she fancies herself as Miss Siegeween's capable helper because she learned a bit of medical knowledge ages ago. Okay. Please watch your mouth, Mr. Jurier. Don't forget that you are the primary reason I have frequent heart palpitations. Hey, don't start arguing now. Please, keep it civil at least. These two seem to have a pretty terrible relationship and only ran into each other because they came here to pick up their meds at the same time. I see. Books. But outside of the two of them, there's nothing suspicious inside the room. All the files on the table appear to be patient records, and while there's a box, I can't check it out right now. Okay. There's also aren't that many furnishings on the wall. Wait, there seems to be a movable hatch on the ground there. Hey, hey! There's no need to fight! Everyone will be released someday, so there's no need to argue over silly things like this! And you can continue your lives up there if you wanted to. Or you can stay down here too. <laughs> but... <laughs> Release. It's way too early for us to even think about that. And who the heck knows if we'd even be able to continue our previous lives? The presence of a movable hatch isn't strange in itself, but perhaps it's my adventurous intuition speaking, but it hasn't been strange that there's a movable hatch here out of all places? Is it hiding something? Please allow me to end this boring and useless conversation. Oh, and Mr. Jurier, I don't want to see your face here again anytime soon. And same to you, Miss Lorvine. Anyway, that was more than enough rest for me, so I'm going to get out of this excessively noisy place. See you later, everyone. Bye. It seems that there is some, He just slowly walked uh, up like that? Drama here. <laughs> hmm. That's just what he's like. I'm sorry you had to see all of that. I'm Lorvine, and that's... Well, his name is Jurier, but I hope you'll never have cause to remember his name. You really can't stand him, huh? I mean, can you blame me? Who would like someone who's as arrogant and obsessed with weird research topics as he is? <clears throat> but there's no need to keep dwelling on him. Okay. I 
I'll accompany you two for a while. Miss Sishween should be back soon, and I'm sure you'll feel better as soon as you've had some of her medicine. Thank you for looking after me. No, no. It's nothing. I'm back! Did you rest like you promised? Um, well... Thank you for getting our medicine, Miss Sishween. <laughs> Did you all cooperate with your bed rest? I trust that nobody got up to walk around. <sighs> Good. Here. This should be two days' worth of medicine for you. Thank you. Take one pill now, and then continue your bed rest. Okay. You take the stomachache pill that Seedrin gave you. Uh, Miss Lorvine, I left in a bit of a hurry just now. Do you still remember if we discussed the color of the pill that you should be taking today? <sighs> I remember. You said it should be yellow. Did they talk about that before we walked in? Why don't I remember? Yellow, huh? I understand. These are yours. Please, make sure to go to bed early after taking them tonight. You'll benefit from a good night's sleep. Okay. Alright, then I'll also be on my way now. I hope you feel better soon, too. Thank you. See ya! See ya! I'm going to fill out your medical record now. You're widely known as the Traveler, right? I just want to double-check a few details, if that's all right with you. Okay. Those two made quite the commotion just now, so why don't we let the Traveler rest? Paimon can answer the questions instead! Yeah. Mm hmm So his primary symptoms are abdominal pain, with secondary symptoms of nausea. Uh, is there anything else? Hmm. That's it! Yeah, that's it. All right, then. Yay! Is there anything we should know besides to take the meds? No, his base constitution is quite good, so I'm sure he'll recover quite quickly after taking the medicine. Please, make sure to stick to bland or less stimulating foods, and don't well, stay I only get a choice much. in what food we have, but Got yes. <laughs> we'll hold the traveler to that for sure! Caesar's still looking at me. I should just try to take a nap, like she said. Oh, you're going to take a nap already? Okay, well, then. yeah. You get some rest. He's sick with stomach pain. You give yourself to a regular patient's bed and relax completely. The weariness from work and intel gathering. What? Uh, you can, however, still gather some hints well, of their conversation. Together. He may look a bit under the weather now, but he's actually super strong. Oh, so you're the best of companions. Well, don't worry. Yeah, Paimon's our good. best friend. Companion. That word brings forth a wave of comfort. You let yourself You're relax. Awake. Yeah, that's right. You know, Paimon is always there for us. for a really long time, but we never left. I feel a lot better. Thank you both. Well, now you can go back without a worry in the world. Remember to take your meds regularly. And remember bland foods. I guess I don't think we get a choice thank in the matter, you, but sweet. thank you. <laughs> Unless you prescribe us, like, special food. Because otherwise, then we have to just use, um, the, the welfare meals, and those are completely random, right? Seems like a lot of people have been coming down with an upset stomach lately. Right. Uh, a lot of people. I'll need to address <laughs> that. Alright, let's get going, then. Alright, so what did we learn from there? We learned that, um, Lorvine and, uh, Jorio, uh, do not like each other, that they seem to have conflict and clashing with each other. Um, so we kind of get the idea of, uh, oh, well, we learned about the hatch too, so how can we connect that to the fact that Sijuin disappears before lunch, uh, often, and then comes back. You really are something! To be able to fall asleep like that and even sleep talk the entire time, you scared Paimon half to death! Sleep talk? Uh, did I say anything I shouldn't have? No, but you kept mumbling things along the lines of, Pyron, go take my grilled fish! <laughs> Look down the Adeptus Temptation now! Oh, we missed those fruits, right? Paimon talked to Sijuin the entire time you were asleep. She seems like she's just a sincere nurse and Paimon didn't notice anything unusual in the room. Are you sure we're not going off track with the infirmary? I hope not. Are we really off track, though? There's still a weird, few weird things about this place. That movable hatch in the ground, as well as the question Sijuin asked Lorvine. And also, were they really talking about the meds before we t walked in? I don't think so. 
Oh, and is Laurina and Jurio's argument genuine, or are they just putting on a show? Paimon, hear me out. Whoa, you really are super thorough. All those tiny little suspicious things that Paimon didn't even pick yeah. up on. Is we it just an act, or is it Lenny. real? <laughs> Over the next few days, you and Paimon work at your stations as normal. During your shifts, however, you can actually find opportunities to write keywords relating to your suspicions on a piece of paper. You manage to slip past the, the slip to a busy Lynette as she happens to pass by, who disguises impeccable and she does not even look at you or change her expression as she pockets the info. <laughs> Look at us, we are so smooth at the spy operation. Finally, the promised ninth day arrives. Lemonade! Are you okay? <laughs> the day. Let's, go meet up with Let's do that. The truth shouted in shadow. Go to the production zone to search for Winnie. Okay. Hi. We look at each other. Oh. Hmm? Mm-hmm. What what is it? It's... Did you two run into any <laughs> trouble over the past few days? Not really. No, we just worked our shifts according to the schedule. Yeah. Nothing weird happened. Hmm, that's good. That means you didn't raise any suspicions when you infiltrated the infirmary. We've taken a look at the slip you've sent. Fremine successfully left the grounds via the pipes two days ago. And as of last night, Lynette has also infiltrated the infirmary after faking an illness. Now that's not necessarily great. In the, in the trailer, we heard Lenny being like, Risley, where did you take my siblings? And here he sent his siblings off into the unknown. So I'm not sure I like where this is going. <laughs> Wait, why is she getting involved as well? You already went above and beyond when you scoped out the infirmary. To put it more bluntly, even if we were to view that as something you didn't exchange for Fremenet's help, you've already done more than enough. No, that's okay. Fremenet's help is really important is a different too, kind of considering job it's from a quite dangerous. <laughs> We want to avoid using the same faces over and over and reduce the amount of suspicion that will fall on any given person. Okay. Lynette also felt like you have already taken the first step for us, so she should okay, be the so one to finish the Okay, so she's going to investigate the hatch for us then. So that's what Lynette thinks. Oh, Paimon hopes everything's going well for her. <laughs> I'm not opposed to helping you. Ether is still so reserved about Lenny, but I think, I think Lenny is definitely our friend by now. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> then, let's go check on Lynette before Fremine returns. If everything went well, then she should be wrapping up her investigation right about now. I'm not sure I like this. Is now really a good time to go over? <laughs> According to my observations, Sijuin always spends around half an hour away from the infirmary right before lunch. Yes. Lynette knows this oh, as well. Oh, okay, wait. So no, no, no. That's right. We know, know that she spends time outside the infirmary, but we also know that she watches people going around in the production zone. So those two things are, are linked, right? She just goes up, out for a break, also, but takes the I'm same break brother, every day. Remember? It's only natural for an older brother to care about his younger sister's well-being. Yeah. Okay, Something that I think right Ether away. knows very well, too. It's an older sibling thing. Head to the infirmary in secret. I mean, there's this guy watching us. The mail room, okay, okay. So at least he's just there to give us directions. He's not, he's not watching us at all, and he's watching us be suspicious at all, right? Lynette should be here right now. Huh. But she's not. Lenny? Strange. Lynette? As expected, Sijuin isn't here, but why isn't Lynette here? Could she have found a lead enough to follow it? No, Lynette rarely deviates from the plan. We agreed that if she were to make changes on the fly, she'd find a way to Are let you know. Are there any cards anywhere? Because then she could let you know. Unless... Wait, also, Lynnie said before, it's like, 
the other House of the Hearth uh, infiltrators vanished, right? Oh no. <laughs> Let's see if there are any clues around here. We can look while we wait for her. Who knows? Maybe she'll be back soon. Okay. Yeah, let's let's just do that. We'll just we'll just look around. We'll, we'll just see what's up with up with everyone. Nothing nothing to worry about here, right? <laughs> there are some books here and a few files. They all look like medical records. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Advanced nursing, how to raise the spirit of your patients, a quick guide to the psychology of emotions, and I'm sure that's not actually a quick laughing. guide, but yes. <laughs> there sure are some interesting books. Who knew Sijuin would be interested in these kinds of things? Positivity. She even has books on understanding people's motivations and feelings. Hmm. Is it because she's a melazine? Or does she have a need to understand her patient's emotional state? Probably a bit of both. Hmm. Seems quite normal to me. These are skills that would come in handy for a nurse from time to yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. So nothing too out of the ordinary there. The beds. None of the beds have any signs of having been slept in. Except that one over there. That's the one Lynette must have used, right? You said she was pretending to be sick. Mm hmm. She would have said her migraine was having a particularly bad flare up. Generally speaking, the head nurse would then ask her to lie down and rest while she left to retrieve the medication. But this bed is still unmade. Which means either the head nurse didn't return the entire time from when Lynette laid down up until she left the bed, or the nurse intentionally. Almost like left someone was way. leaving in a hurry there. Oh no, that's not a good sign. <sighs> I, I understand. He, he's worried because he's. We went through his whole story quest and he talked about sometimes the world is full of deception and lies, especially for him who has been betrayed and made alliances and just has to keep wearing different faces. And he's a magician and his whole thing is tricking people. And so what do you have in this world that you know for sure is like real, like your truth? Like you're grounding, like you're rock to like ground who you are in reality. And it's Lynette, the person he's never been separated from and would do anything for to protect her. Go to the ends of the earth to save her, right? Because they're, they're twins and they've never been separated. So, this is probably incredibly distressing. I feel really bad. Ah! Isn't it? We saw it before! Wait, this thing? It doesn't look like it's been disguised that well. No, almost like they wanted us to find it. Lenny leans down to get a close, uh, uh, get close to the movable hatch. The space behind it is empty. From its size, I don't think it's an entrance that is meant to be taken apart. Okay. There's probably a mechanism around here somewhere. Could Lynette have tried to get inside? But if that's the case, she would have contacted me for sure. Oh no. Hmm. Okay. Let's look around here for some more clues. Don't panic, just take another look. The look on Lenny's face. He's definitely beginning to panic. Don't, yeah, don't panic is something people say when they are panicking. It's okay. Hey, don't panic. Guys, but as long as they show the that they're not here. panicking, it won't cause Slip more panic. paper. Oh, good, a it's sign, right? Eh? over here, and there's a bunch written on it, too. It reads, Out of respect for your usual practices, I'll use a piece of paper or card as the medium to pass on my message. Okay, so you not written by Lynette. This is me giving you my best regards. This is... Is... is that all? Is there anything on the back? The back? Uh, this... this is... Show me! Now! Lenny! <sighs> that... that look on your face! P Paimon's reading it now! No... Would you care to guess where Miss Lynette of the Fatui could be right now? No... <laughs> Don't do no. anything. Could she have? Is she already? Rithesley. Did he? D 
deliberately leave the infirmary unguarded to use it as bait? Oh no. Wait, you mean he was aware of our ghouls from the very beginning? But why? We didn't run into any trouble last time, and he also never reached out to us since. Like I said, I think he's been aware of what both us and um, Lenny, Lena, and Fermine have been up to this entire time. I think he knows. He's just waiting for the right moment to step in and do what he needs to do. Until we do anything that doesn't that needs intervention, he's just gonna let us be and see where it goes. Um, but no. There's just so much anxiety. What, what happened to Lynette? Why would he choose to act during our second infiltration attempt instead of the first? Yes, that is a crucial question. Risley, he doesn't do anything without a clear goal or reason. So this means he had no concerns about your activities from the very beginning. You are not from the same camp as us. You were sent down here by Nervulet, so you have no conflict of interest with Risley. We're a completely different story, though. Why did he only go after Lynette? Why didn't he go after you as well? I'd like to know that, too. Why did he only go after her? Where's Feminine? <laughs> Don't panic. Just think everything over. I have to stay calm. Don't this panic. is not like what happened last time. The situation is different Things are not going now. to plan, so... <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Wait, but that means... But that means... The fact that Fremine was able to leave the grounds... Could Risley have let him go as well? But what does he gain by letting Fremine leave like that? No... No, this is really bad! I don't want anything to happen to the siblings! I want to protect them all. Lenny's angry now. I'm angry too. I don't want anything bad to happen. What do you, what is it do you get? What do you understand now, Ether? <laughs> he deliberately made them both disappear. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. So he's challenging me and trying to provoke me. I'm sure of it. I think you're right. We never should have sent out Fremine. We That's what I was saying, but you know, nobody wants to listen to what I have to say. The pipe, and we even thought luck was on our side. If Risley let him leave on purpose, then he's probably in a terrible spot now as well. I knew he would. I knew we'd throw him down there. It's absolutely perilous. And this is definitely the plan. Then he's getting more and more panicked. Yeah, like I said. <laughs> he's clearly panicking. He says, don't panic. He's telling us not to panic, but he was the one panicking. It's different. It's it's interesting because Ether and, and Linny are both like older twin brothers, but Ether's been separated from his twin for so long. Whereas for Linny, this is a really bad time for this to be the first time that's happening, <laughs> especially since we know this is not a safe place and. Something bad could really be happening right now to Lina and Femini. I mean, the best case scenario is that they're hostages, so... Okay, we have to just calm down. Think it through. Don't go charging in there, except we're probably gonna go do that because I don't know what else we're gonna do right now except for confront... Confront Risley. Don't be like this, Linny! Fremini wouldn't have left if we hadn't told you about Child. That was our fault. Yeah, it is our fault. No, I'm the leader of this operation, and I'm the one responsible for this team. I was the one who failed to protect them. I'll go talk to Rice. Yeah, Rashley. I will say, I think we hey, we failed to do the danger Kevlin, assessment. Please talk some sense into him. No. I simply <laughs> cannot allow Lynette to be abducted again. I have to go. I'll find a way to get them back. Me. We have to go with him. He's rushed out the door. After him. I don't think Ether was gonna stop him, but like I said, Aww. oh, what are you up to? <laughs> I I know that she's working with what? or for. Um, I feel like we still uh -oh, have some to make changes on these details. 
It's not impossible, but it'll require extensive testing. Okay. Is that so? Very well. Then please be mindful of the time. Huh? Is someone? Pack everything up. Uh, Whoever's outside okay. is eavesdropping. They'll probably come in once we stop talking. Okay, that still doesn't give us much evidence of what they were talking about. Ether! Whoa! Are you okay? Ah, these two. As expected, they've Yeah, I know that she's not innocent of the happenings sure. of this place, but what exactly is your involvement? <laughs> I like smart people, but I also like playing dumb. <laughs> I like the feeling of being trusted. That's actually really scary. The way she just has like this cute, innocent smile, but you know that she is plotting something really evil right now, <laughs> like a like a That's doll a in a There's in no an escape can. room. <laughs> Take a breath before you begin. You know something, or in a horror movie. To read human expressions is quite the useful skill. Lenny, wait, wait, don't tell me to no wait. To you know full well if this was Ether and Lumine, Ether would do the exact same thing. Recklessly charge into danger, because what else do you have to lose at that point? He's already out of sight! How is he so fast? Let's go head him off at Risley's office! How is he so fast? He's desperate! <laughs> I don't- I don't like this! <laughs> Over here? I forget how to get in. Wait, this is the entrance, right? No. Isn't the Duke's office like a specific thing? Okay, teleport there. I think we have to go in from. Oh, right here. This is not good. To the office. Come out and face me, Risley! Hmm. Aren't we <laughs> at an administrative office space? Why don't you at least try to follow even a couple rules from the Fortress's indoor management regulations? What did you do to my sister? I ran into the young miss at the infirmary. I'd heard that she was suffering from quite the migraine, so I decided to invite her over for a cup of tea. I do have some teas in my collection that can work wonders against such an illness. Stop joking around! Where did you take my siblings? I have also. Oh my gosh, you hear the pain in his voice when he says spectrum. that? Miss Lynette would <laughs> sometimes enter a box this filled with like... water, only to emerge the next second from another place altogether. She so sometimes enter a box full of water, only to emerge somewhere else. Oh no, I don't like. That's where this is coming. Maybe she'll appear behind you right now if you were to turn your head. Is he trying to trick me into turning my head? No. He's probably not looking to attack me right now. All of the hostages are in his hands, and he's even in the mood for small talk. That means Lynette is probably still alive. Yes. You knew we were investigating the infirmary from the start, so you deliberately aroused the Traveler's suspicions and baited us into continuing our investigation, just so that you'd be able to kidnap Lynette. <sighs> As for okay. Fremenay, no, you probably didn't even interfere with Child's escape. You let him go, so you could purge the Fatui members that we had planted into your ranks. There was no need to do so. The Fortress of Meripede is a pretty pleasant place. Most people enjoy their lives here. The only ones who act differently are those with personal agendas. It was quite Like everybody that we actually know here. <laughs> you removed our original members and spread the news of Child's escape so Father would assign our team to come down and He's investigate. so angry. I would be Remain angry now too. Fallen into your hands, right? <laughs> If you're oh so omnipotent and so in control, why would you need hostages? Yeah. One correction. Lynette is in my hands right now, but Fremenet is not. He's not? What do you really want? Lenny! 
Oh, wonderful. Everyone is here, so I'll only need to say this once. Thank you so much for cooperating with me. Where did you take Lynette and Fremini? Please, you have to tell me, or else it's just gonna... <laughs> you have to tell me, please. You're into the point, I see. Alas, only Miss Lynette is currently having a cup of the Fortress's finest tea. Although, as per your original plan, Mr. Fremenet should also have returned to the Fortress by now. But he has neither shown up within my gates, nor has he been taken into any kind of <laughs> I knew we were throwing so him into danger by making him go down there. Right Going to whatever place Wait, Child was being summoned to? Mean, that's not a good sign. locked him outside in the sea? I closed the Fortress's gate to the outside world. That's all. Fremenet's a star diver, so he should be fine, right? I don't know, Pamela. We're no, really deep underwater. We're still here, so he definitely tried to find a way to come back for us. So we can't assume he might have made a break for the surface. But why would I do this? You may be asking. Yeah, why do this? <laughs> to have an audience with you, of course. My intel tells me that Mr. Linney is a great magician, so it's only natural for me to want to have some cards of my own when it comes to negotiating. Okay. Besides, what could you possibly you negotiate you with to us? Miss Lynette, that you've always wanted to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the Lord of the Fortress of Meripede, regardless of whether it was in a personal or a professional. I don't capacity. think he meant like this. Well, you but okay. Wish. <laughs> so, you've been keeping tabs on us before we even set foot in the fortress. Some of my folks just happened to hear a thing or two. That's all. In any case, I will be straight with you. Okay. I was willing to play dumb and turn a blind eye, so we had a pleasant few days playing games together here. But once you started focusing on the Forbidden Zone... No, I knew he was listening on us the whole time. But Mr. Yeah. Linney, the cards are stacked against you right now. Miss Lynette is in my hands, and Mr. Fremenet is still slowly being pickled out there in the brine. You know just as well as I that he cannot last out there forever. You need do but one thing to guarantee their safety. I would like you to contact your superior, and ideally invite her over for a cup of tea with me. Oh, you want to see father? <laughs> but why should she bother giving you an audience? Well, if she cares for the well-being of her dearest children, she should have plenty of motivation <laughs> to join me for a parent's like evening. parent-teacher conference? I've heard that the bonds <laughs> between the members of the House of the Hearth are like the bonds of family. I don't see why she would refuse. Why did you think Father sent us to handle the Fortress of Meripede? This place is basically a no-man's land. It wouldn't be fitting for anyone as important as a Harbinger like Father to come here in person. Oh, I see. So it's because she doesn't care for my place here. That's such a shame. After all, I've amassed quite the tea collection. I was looking forward to sharing it with her. Both Monsieur Nervillet and Lady Farina have already received many samples as gifts. Mm -hmm. Was this the extent of your master plan to get to father? No matter how much pressure you may put on me, I won't allow you to use us to blackmail her. He's gonna test that, Lenny. Along with. <laughs> He's All gonna I'm test for is a face -to -face how much he can do to blackmail you. No interest in the fortress's <laughs> secret? Mr. Lenny. You have one last chance to invite your father here. If you refuse... <sighs> Lenny! Yeah, why do you have to do this? Instead of asking why I'm doing this, why don't you try to see things from my perspective for a second? From the very beginning, the Fatui has been actively infiltrating my fortress. Okay, I gave enough. you a warning by cutting off the first few operatives I found, but that only caused you to double down. Had you given up on the fortress then and there, I'd have no reason to want to talk. Mr. Fremenet left the fortress on his own, and Miss Lynette tried to pry out my secrets right in front of me. No matter how you look at it, the responsibility for this... Yeah, I do agree. It doesn't you. look great. It doesn't look great because here Lenny is trying to covertly find the gnosis and steal it so i suppose it really does look bad <laughs> but dude you're doing too far don't separate the siblings please please don't hurt them i i shouldn't ask father to do anything because of us six five wait i two one we know what he'll do time's up it really is a shame, Mr. Lenny. Risley! 
Negotiations have broken down. Please leave, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for my afternoon tea. <laughs> um, please wait, can we really not talk about this some more? Yeah, listen to the Traveler. If you can't talk to Linny, can you at least talk to us? Yeah. You do realize that I'm only letting you go because of Nervalette, yes? You're here helping him out, and I've already done my best to stay out of your way. But that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. The fortress may be small and remote, but it still has its own set of laws. I want to save Fremini and Lynette too! Hmm... Please... Then how about this? Those who are capable deserve respect. You've spent quite some time investigating my home turf by now, so why don't you tell me a thing or two about what you found, hmm? Okay. I'll ask you three questions. Answer all of them correctly, and I'll agree to your request. Question one. Regarding the hidden rules of the production zone, what is the truth behind the one about not being allowed to work for three days in a row? And you got a bunch of purple tentacles? If I recall correctly, if you keep working without any rest during lunch hour on Thursday, you'll find a portion of strange meat in your welfare meal. It's a good thing that we've already run a thorough investigation on this. Let's see if I can remember all the clues. I should be with- oh no. Ah, <sighs> okay. If you break the hidden rule in the production zone, your welfare meal might contain some strange meat. Uh, what happens if you violate the thing? Okay, that's it. Who will see it if you keep working continuously? I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. Okay. But what could Sijuin be doing during that? Time? Oh! That's why she's standing out there! She's spying on us! She's not just tweeting like a tourist looking at us. That's it. That has to be it. I'm not even gonna read the rest of them. Under what circumstances does a strange meat appear if you work continuously for three days? Fanta promoter has been nothing to do with Fanta. We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. Okay. It seems like she can perceive the general state of a person's health just by looking at them. Okay, not for this yet. Okay, not the Fanta. Fanta's internal still report, Fanta. The research notes said that the Melazine race perceives the world very differently. Not from that. According to Collins, the Pancration tournament only took place because the Fanta company spawned. And what was it's where you work for three days, but that's the not written research here. Research notes said that the Melazine. We often see Miss Siege. Okay. Why does a strange meat appear the way it does? Oh, I haven't figured that out yet. I suppose whatever clue I pick here is gonna give me a big shock as to what it is. According to Collins, the Pancration tournament only took place because the Fanta company sponsored it. Okay, Fanta. Fanta's internal report Something to do with Fanta. They're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. But the product has to undergo a trial because even Fanta's own employees have a lot of reservations. Okay, well, it's not a drink, but I suppose Fanta could be ranching out and making strange purple meat. Okay, all of those are incorrect. Okay. Who will see it if you keep working continuously? We often see Miss Sijuin up. Okay. Okay, so it didn't it didn't accept it because it's correct. It just accepted it because that's what I submitted. Under what circumstances does a strange meat appear? I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. Okay, so she's preparing strange meat, is what you're trying to say? Why? The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Okay, not that. The research notes said that the Melazine race perceives the world very... According to Collins, the pancreas... Because of Fanta sponsorship. No, okay. The Fanta promoter has been struggling. struggling because he doesn't recognize this one. No? Because the Melazines can can perceive the something? Research notes said that the Melazine race perceives the world very differently from humans. Oh As a result, the Melazines have also developed the Okay, maybe I should let the whole text play out. Rather strange <laughs> and alien to humans. That's why it looks so alien. Okay. Because Sijuin has been preparing the meals, not the cafeteria guy. When when you break the rule. That's what's going on. Paimon understands it now. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Certainly not the me. The hero of the production zone. People are not supposed Yay, to work three days in a row. Yay, we got detective Paimon. She got to bring that into prison, huh? In their welfare meal. Okay. At first, we thought this strange meat must have something to do with the people who disappeared, but in reality, they were all. Prepared by Sijuin, the head nurse. 
She often visits the production zone to observe the workers' health and makes a note of anyone who has worn themselves out after three full days of work. Yes. I have her sense of duty as the head nurse as well as her genuine concern for the workers' health. Sijuin visits the cafeteria right before lunch and cooks an extra dish for those who can use the stamina boost. Sijuin has only the best intentions with her surprise gift and doesn't want anyone to find out about what she does. However, I don't think she's that innocent, but okay. Melazines as a race perceive the world differently from humans and their sense of aesthetics. I don't think she's as innocent though as you claim. I'm not sure that she's the just, recipients of her just only doing it out of the kindness of her heart. <laughs> cannot taste the care within and usually just freak out. Are we on the right track? Right track, yes, I think. <laughs> Not bad. You've uncovered Sijuin's secret and even guessed her intentions correctly as well. It's nice to know that her efforts have not gone unacknowledged. All right, now for my next question. Oh, no. There are also some hidden rules in the Pancration Ring, <sighs> including the one that you're not allowed to support both sides of a fight. Why is that? Something about well, it's the dishonorable. The hidden rules of the Pancration Ring. I remember if someone tries to support both boxers at the same time, they'll receive a package the next morning which contains a strange blood covered liquid. Yeah, what is up with that? The blood of our enemies in the bottle. <laughs> we don't know whose blood it is. You violate the hidden rules, you receive a bag containing this fluid. Okay, fine. Easy. Who sent the strain the package containing the strange blood colored fluid? I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. But what could Sijuin be doing during that time? Okay, so she could also be making the blood drink as well, but I don't think so. The internal report suggests that they're starting a new trial oh. for an unnamed and unpackaged product. Right, right, right. So it must be Fanta. The has to undergo a trial That's right, because we know Fanta was sponsoring the ring. That's the only way they could run it. About it. Oh, the Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, okay, this one. according to Collins, the Pancreas... So who sent it? These guys. Why does it look the way it does? It's Fanta's a new product. Reports. And then the this? Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, Why do the they... Duke believes... Okay. So there really was nothing to yes, be afraid everything of. Everything to do with the, the blood covered. That That's still the stuff that does not that make me feel any about better how, about it because it doesn't um, doesn't rule out it being blood. After all, the Infanta employees thought it was really unsettling, right? Package containing a strange blood-colored liquid. People get scared. And it could just be really dark blood oranges, right? <laughs> with the missing boxer. Okay. But really, it's just a bottle of the latest yet to be named and packaged new Fanta trial product. A blood red drink. It's no wonder even Fanta's own staff were questioning the company's decision making. The company, facing backlash from its own staff, decided to try to trial the product on a smaller scale. And the, I understand yeah, this does like not rule out <laughs> what the drink the actually is. <laughs> to sponsor the pancreation tournament so they could push their new product. But the Duke completely refused to even entertain the idea. The Duke, knowing how valuable coupons are in the fortress, knew that only total idiots who didn't understand their true value would bother buying a Fanta product here. And so, only those who proved their stupidity by being dumb enough to bet on two opposing <laughs> sides of the same match we're selected to receive Yeah, we drink. lost. We lose money I that acknowledge way. acknowledge <laughs> the effort you've put into bringing the truth of this mystery to light. Although, based on your description, that Fanta promoter is a bit too careless with his words. I may just reconsider my collaboration with the company. All right, hmm. and here's the final question. Yeah, What's and how many people are betting on... Our head on nurse and they're, all they're, of her patients they're trying to in the test out the product, right? Hang on. Okay, before we get to that, we, we're, they're trying to test out the product, right? Why would they? So I know they're trying to get a workaround, right? But who else besides us, who are trying to push the system, would actually bet on both boxers in the ring? <laughs> You're not going to get to try out your product with anyone. And we didn't even drink it, so they got no data from that. And we didn't even know that we were testing a trial product, so. 
I don't know. Uh, what's the secret behind our head nurse and all of her patients in the infirmary? Does it have... Well, we know that Sijuan as a melazine can sense people's emotions. Do you think that she's controlling the people there too? And that they're like her like secret agents? I don't know, that might be that might be a little bit too far. I don't know. Uh Stop your cruel and pointless games, Risley. You know that we haven't finished our investigation. Hang on. <laughs> so there's no way we can answer the last question. The thought uh, of sparing Lynette and Fremenet never even crossed your mind. Wait, you didn't even let us try. We should at least try first and then you go yell at him, because I'm pretty sure we wouldn't get it right, but I mean you don't we don't know. You'll pay for this! <laughs> So did someone shoot him? Oh, close one. I owe you, Siege Wing. Uh, it was a fantastic shot. It was nothing, Your Grace. Siege Wing? Though this gun may look like a toy, it's actually fully functional. As yeah. I just demonstrated. <laughs> Siege Wing. You. Are you his accomplice in all this? Well, it was pretty obvious he was. Like I said, it's like. <laughs> She's pretending to be all cute and innocent, but like, I see the intent through your eyes. I'm not a melusine, but I can see that you're up to something. <laughs> I didn't think she was going to shoot Lenny, though. What the heck? <laughs> not at all. I am merely a resident of the fortress, and thus protecting it is my duty. When Monsieur Nervilet asked me to come here, he told me that my job would be to take care of the well-being of everyone here. I am merely discharging my duties. Uh, okay, sure. But if you sure. mean what you just said, then isn't Linny someone you should be looking after as well? Isn't he a resident here just like the rest of us? <laughs> I didn't expect her to shoot Linny, though. <laughs> oh my gosh. This game is going in directions I didn't think it would. <laughs> Lenny, if you were so close with Nervulet, why not learn a thing or two about virtue from him? But I really am just doing what Monsieur Nervulet told me to do. Everything I did, I've done to protect them. Had I not, they would be in far more dire straits right now. His Grace knows it too, right? Your Grace? Mind proving my innocence to them? <sighs> my dear Sijuin, whatever shall I do with you? Would it have killed you to just wait another minute or two? Well, it's nearly time after all. Well, Lenny was charging at him, but still. <laughs> can be truly frustrating sometimes, Your Grace. I figured I should try to talk some sense into you. What are you talking about? What time? Take me if you want, but let them go. Mm hmm. How touching. Can you just give me one more minute? Don't be. I'm pretty like sure that, he's like bleeding out, all but okay. Right, everyone, calm down. Two more visitors will be arriving any time. Oh, this is gonna crowd it then. Who is it? I'll go get a cup of tea. Miss Sijuin, I leave Miss Lynette in your care. You... What are you doing? I believe I hear footsteps. The door suddenly slams open. A familiar figure bursts into the room. Some space, please. Hello, Clarand. Ah, uh, Miss Clarand. My door. Fremenay! 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 Wait, is Clarinda working? Who's, Who's she with? <laughs> Who's she working with? <laughs> okay. Work. I don't know. She's just doing work. I'm sorry about shooting you, Mr. Linny. The tranquilizer. Okay, okay, it wasn't a bullet. It wasn't even a rubber bullet. It was just a tranquilizer. Okay. <laughs> what happened to Fremenay? Wasn't he diving just outside of the fortress? Why is he looking like... Like this? These symptoms, it can't be. A flushed face, an accelerated pulse. He must have consumed primordial seawater. Oh no. What did you say? Uh, please, 
Make some space. But he's not dead yet. I need to give Mr. Fremini a more thorough checkup. <laughs> no. Your I'll leave the rest to you. I'll talk to Clorand while you get Fremini to where he needs to be. Everything else can wait. Where's Lina? You said you were gonna hand her over to 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 Sidrin, right? <sighs> I'm so confused. <laughs> no, Fremini. I mean, we know that. Drinking, you have to drink a lot of the seawater for it to kill you and dissolve you because people were drinking it in like the drugs, right? But like, no, don't, don't hurt him! Not Remine! At least he's not dead yet. Please do everything you can to save him. <sighs> Lenny's expression was disgusted. It seems like he'd rather not have Sejuan touch Fremenet. Still, he didn't stop her since it's obvious that Fremenet does require urgent medical care. Sejuan's examining Fremenet carefully. She doesn't look too upset, which is a good sign. I hope Fremenet will be okay. Uh, how is he? These symptoms are probably caused by an acute ingestion of a large amount of primordial seawater. Still, his Large amount should not kill Hugo. Good. We saw what happened when somebody just poured the stuff on, on somebody else from Fontaine. Of course, <laughs> it would be best if he stayed for further observation. But let's leave him here for now, and move him to the infirmary once he's recovered a bit more. Uh, sorry, I am aware that the infirmary <laughs> may not be your favorite place in the Yeah, I think that's going to be a little bit traumatizing <laughs> now. <laughs> only have a single clinic in the fortress, however. Mm -hmm. Why would he ingest a large amount of primordial seawater after leaving the fortress? How could that possibly happen? Please, look after Mr. Fremenet for the moment. I'll go fetch some medicine and a respirator. Oh, I'll bring Miss Lynette back with me. Thank you. Please do Where that. Where is she? How is she right now? Oh, she just took a nap in an empty room after I tranquilized her. If my calculations oh, thank are goodness. Correct, she should also be waking up right around now. You might not believe me, but His Grace and I actually made some snacks and tea for her. He needs fun of to stop tensing the muscles on his face. It seems that he trusts what Sejuan has just said. Alright, so... She's a hostage. Then that's what... Then, yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're not dead, but does the... It's the Fremoto Seahorse supposed to, like, dissolve you, right? Fremine! I knew that something bad was gonna happen if we sent him down there. If and if it was something that was summoning child to go down there, there's definitely some weird magic that like we shouldn't just throw him in there. But <laughs> all right, well I guess he's fine. <laughs> well, he will be, right? Right, Fremenay? <sighs> What's up with you two? What's that look on your face? I thought I made good time on the way back. Oh, I'm just admiring your punctuality. Had you arrived just a few minutes later, Sijuin may have been forced to shoot Mr. Lin again. <laughs> Please, How's I'm glad that didn't happen. <laughs> the water has changed. It's pretty much as expected. The concentration of primordial seawater has increased significantly. I was only out there a short time, so it wasn't too bad. But if one were to stay for any significant amount of time, well, you can see how that boy is doing. No. Where was he when you found him? The abandoned zone at the end of the pipes. A good distance into the water. Closer than I thought. He must have recognized it early on and tried desperately to swim back. Locking the door was necessary. I don't think we could have saved two. Saved two? Well, I did try to convince them that I had my reasons. Who else, it child? To work, though. It would probably work on Nouvellet. He has a knack for picking out who had good intentions, even when the outcomes were all terrible. Uh, that's a bad sign if you're having to plead your case to Nivellet. Want some tea? <laughs> we're saving people from dying in this, like, national crisis. Not want some tea? particularly. <laughs> if you want to drink some that badly, just say so. Fine, I'd like to get some tea. Want me to get you a cup too, since I've already made it? Uh, might as well then, I suppose. Actually, do you have a towel? I would like to dry my hair. <laughs> she put her hat back on, though. <laughs> Alright, so... When I got Wait, locked down there, okay? and then... Cloran saved him? But then who else did she not save, then? I'll be fine. They're all here now. Don't worry about me. Are 
Are you sure? You don't look all right. My hands and feet are still a bit weak, but that's probably just the residual effects of the tranquilizer shot. I'm back, everyone. Lynette! Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Traveler, Paimon, you're here too. Remine? Is he... He'll be fine. But for now, please help me lift him up. He'll be fine. That's a big promise to make. <laughs> Remine. His breathing's beginning to slow down. Give me a hand and help me get him to the infirmary. You need like a stretcher or something. <laughs> yeah, I'll take him from this side. Lynette, together? Look at them together! I'm so glad we got them reunited. Want to come with us? Yes. The Duke and Clarander gone. Yeah, they left just now. <laughs> Did you not notice, Plymouth? <laughs> they probably went to get some tea. The Duke will explain the truth in just a bit. Miss Cloran will need a break since she always still scares me. Caesar still scares me because she seems like she's acting a lot da 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 about all of this. Cloran saved Remine from the sea. Just what happened there? Go back to the infirmary with Remine. Yeah, get me out of this office, please. <laughs> okay, it makes our sense that it was a trank dart, but still. I didn't expect, I didn't expect, I didn't expect her to shoot from that uh, friend, Lenny. <laughs> no. <laughs> the story? <laughs> this is getting interesting. The cataclysm's quickening. The primordial seawater, 100% is related to the cataclysm. But in what way, I am afraid to find out. <laughs> Fremine! He's awake. Fremine, how do you feel? Lenny. Lynette. We're all here. Uh, where am I? The infirmary at the Fortress of Meripede, Mr. Fremine. And you are no longer in any danger. How do you feel? No imminent you danger at the least. I don't know what Lysa is going to do to all of us. <laughs> uh, traveler. Paimon. It's been so long. Hi. Uh, the sea. There's something wrong with the seawater. Okay, just lie down. Shh, just tell it's us. It's okay. Slowly. We can talk about it after you've recovered. No, listen to me. This is really serious. There's primordial seawater mixed into the regular seawater. I don't know why it's there, but no one should touch it. What happened after you snuck into the pipes? Pipes? Huh. Right, the pipes. It's all coming back to me now. Okay. So the pipes, that was where child escaped to. Oh no. We're gonna relive from an ace experience. That was the domain sound effect, right? I'm in. Hmm. Seems like this pipe hasn't been used in a long time. It looks abandoned. <sighs> Where could Master Child be? Oh, we get to keep our Octo Baby! Octo Baby, no! It's dangerous here! Level 90 Fremine, right? So, I mean, it could just be doing that just just because, but it could also be because of the fight coming up. 
There's a gate. Okay. This is like the underground. Is this the hidden area? Huh. This mechanism looks like it's been tampered with. The forbidden zone? Could he have done it? area i do like these underground um yeah. like old abandoned technological te techno technologically uh, design mechanism areas that we do seem to find a lot of H however <laughs> uh however this is <laughs> this is a bit nerve-wracking <laughs> Getting stuck on something. Seems like I'll have to avoid those obstacles while I turn it. Okay, so it can only it can only turn in one direction then. Okay, so we gotta lower it. Yeah. Well, at least this gear can only turn it in one direction. See the water? Okay. <laughs> I completely was not looking in front of me when I when we just went there. Uh, okay. That scared me. I was like, oh, pretty water. There's a window out there. <laughs> this is where the water starts. Okay. Master Child probably dived into the water. I'll go take a look as well. I mean, no child's a good swimmer, but but still. Dive into the water to continue investigation. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, look, Uncle Baby! In its, in its natural environment! Although I'm not sure the water down here is so healthy, so I don't know if it would look this happy, but... But you know, everything's gonna be fine. <sighs> The vegetation here is a bit more sparse. These traces aren't natural. A person must have left them. And recently. I should be going in the right direction. There is quite a lot of like vegetation here. Look at these glowing these plants grow. This is really pretty if it wasn't so scary. There are traces here too. I need to keep so it's going. So like slightly traveled here, right? Traces are gone. This is a dead end, right? But I don't see where he could have gone from here. Uh, wait. What the? Uh, uh, my heart is racing, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. That's not What's good. What's going on? <laughs> uh, no good. I have to get back. They still don't know so, so anything that, about what's he went going on. Expected. If I turn back right now, I should still be able to make it. Uh oh. Return to shore quickly. Is it timed? Go, 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 go. Don't let anything else happen to him. I can't die here. No, don't die here. I mean, I know he does it, but still. I knew this is going to happen if we do this. This is bad. I'm feeling worse and worse, and I'm still underwater. I have to push. 
Shush. You're almost there. No! Clorand. Okay. Wait, that didn't take two days. Well, it might have the part before. <laughs> this is sped up version of the event. Hmm. So, in other words, the trail you were following vanished, and you had no idea where Master Child could have gone. But there was also no obvious place for him to have disappeared to. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I tried my best to swim back, but I had already put some distance between myself and the fortress, and I just couldn't find the strength to keep going. I probably passed out some time after that, and you know the rest. Miss Clarand brought you back, but we also don't know why she just suddenly appeared at the fortress, or why she went out to see Yeah, there's some explaining to do. Miss Clarand, you say? I must go thank her in person. So he has a, a line that is like about Clorand in his profile, and it's uh, locked behind uh, other conditions. Last I checked, so uh, that's that's probably what this is about. <laughs> You're still too weak for Mane. You can go after you've had some more rest. Miss Lynette is right. I believe Miss Clorand will stay here as a guest for another few days, so there's no need to hurry. Okay. A guest? Then I can assume Risley was the one who invited her to come down here? You should ask His Grace about that. He'll be able to explain better than me. Yeah, he's got some explaining to do. Got it, I'll go talk to him. Yeah, it's about time he actually told us what's going on. Wanna come with us, Lenny? Uh, I don't think that went no, so well last please time. Please go on without me. <laughs> I don't want to leave just yet. Alright, fair enough. Lenny. The logical part of my brain is aware that we're safe right now, but I still can't bring myself to leave. Both of you are just in danger. Yeah. Hmm. Understood. Then let's just sit together for a while. In that case, I'll leave the infirmary to you. The Traveler and I are going to head out for now. As long as you stay in here, I don't think you'll be disturbed. Thank you. Aww. Truth shouted in shadow. Secret keepers and forbidden zones. Go to the Duke's office. I... I'm so sorry, Lenny. Aww. I'm also really sorry, Lenny. I should have been more careful. Don't say that. It was all my fault. <sighs> yeah, I was so the one who should have been more careful. Guys. I was too. You two were nearly... If I was stronger... Maybe I would have already found Master oh, Child. It's okay, I don't think it's... No, how can you say that? I don't think that's it. Huh? I'm sorry. Hmm. What I'm hearing is, we all dropped the ball at some point during the mission. So the responsibility falls on all of us. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. It's on all of us. <sighs> Lenny, we understand that you're worried about us. But we're worried about you as well. Yeah. Please don't blame yeah, yourself. All the burdens on we yourself. We want you to alone. keep your spirits up. Yeah. Go to the Duke's office. All right. I think this is a good time for me to take a break then, because it's my birthday, and I'm gonna. It's a sunny day outside, and I'm gonna do some other stuff for my birthday. But wow, well, there was a lot of stuff that happened. <laughs> I, I'm just so glad that they're all together and they're safe and you didn't die from the primordial water. <laughs> now, Risley and Clarand have some explaining to do and also, uh, we still haven't found Child. We only know that Child was not where, where he went down that way and we did not find him and there was no place he could have gone. So then, so then what happened to him? I don't know, <laughs> but I will probably finish up the rest of this Archon Quest tonight or tomorrow. Maybe tonight. Tonight we're gonna get the bubble blower, so maybe we can take that around and celebrate as we explore more scary horror stories like this. Like, this is pretty scary. I'm glad nothing actually happened to Lena and Femine, but, it, you know, it could have. Like, Femine almost drowned. <laughs> oh, I'm just glad they're okay. Alright, well, 
taking a break for now. Uh, goodbye from me and Otto Baby. And I'm going to go enjoy a sunny day. Alright, take care everyone. See you next time. Bye!